It was as though this plan had been with him all his life, pondered through the seasons. Now, in his 15th year, crystallized with the pain of peace. It wasn't until after I received the part that I really started to look at it and just realize how much Frank was not, you know, the regular boyfriend, but, you know, the manipulated dead from the other reality. And so I came to that conclusion fairly quickly afterwards. Yeah. And that most of the performance would be based on that. Every living thing follows a long set path. And if you could see your path or channel, then you could see into the future, right? I have to say the first time I saw the movies was it was like, okay, I went to internet and started reading theories and like yes. the explanations. How was that for you as an actor? On set, did you discuss like these complications of, of the scripts of the story? Well, you know, I made sense of it as an actor. You need to make sense of the material so you know uh, where you're coming from when you're performing. What you know, what your character's thinking, where they're from, and where they're going. What am I? What is my character trying? What is he trying to communicate in the movie? And once it started, I had to. You know, I thought I had a hold on it. I would get somewhere in the script and be like, "Wait a minute!" And then I'd have to go back in the script and look again, and then jump back forward and go back and, but. I was able, at least for me, to make sense of it. So I know that by the time that I got to making the movie, and I think to this day, <clears throat> it makes sense to me. <laughs> and I don't know if that's partly why I ended up getting the part of Frank, but I told the director at the audition, I, you know, I turned to him and I, because he asked if I had any questions and I said, I don't have any questions, but I wanted him to know one thing. I totally get it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so by the, you know, for me, being a fan of uh, chaos theory and entropy and, and, you know, in science and in astronomy, you know, black holes, for instance, and the entropy they cause in the universe. So you have a certain amount of order and you have a certain amount of chaos in the universe. And physics works the same way, too. You know, no, nothing really disappears. All matter only changes form. So I applied all of this to Donnie Darko. And I remember saying this to the director and I go, I get it. This is what it's about. You know, you have a certain amount of entropy and order. And if you upset that balance in the universe, the universe will implode. It will no longer, that delicate balance is broken. And that's what happens in Donnie Darko. Yeah. So this is what we're making right. And he looked at me and he goes, whatever you say, Jimmy, <laughs> whatever you think it is. Um, so I'm thankful that he let me come up with my own conclusion of what it's about, but I had to come up with a reason why it made sense and why it made sense to me and how it plays into everything. And so I chose a universal theme. Yeah. And I, even though Richard Kelly, I think says that, I think that he too chose a universal theme when he was making this movie. Um, because if we believe in physics and the actual physics and science, then it says that every reality that you can think of is happening. Yeah, the multiverse. And the multiverse exactly and so in a strange way believe it or not as i was walking home the other day um and i wrote it down but i think i can remember it and I, this applies to donnie darko but i didn't think of this and i th this is just my way of thinking so even a few days ago i was walking home and i and i understood the universe for a moment and i said that to myself i said because past present and future are all happening at the same time what hasn't happened yet has already happened and what has already happened hasn't happened yet. But because we're human beings, we perceive things in a linear manner. But really, it's all happening at the same time, past, present, and future. And now that I'm speaking to you, I, I guess it does suggest the idea that that is what Donnie Darko is as well. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, Frank here watching over us as we uh, do the interview. That's the original one. Um, it's a copy of the original, Okay, but from the same mold. The original one, um, there's three that we used for the movie. One was uh, sold to Kirk Hammett from Metallica. Oh. So he has one of the ones that I wore. And then there's a second one that's kept with the suit that my friend actually owns. And he's about to donate it to, this, uh, to the Motion Picture Museum of Arts and Sciences. So he's about to donate that. And then the third mask, believe it or not, as a gift to the producer, Nancy Yvonen, who, if it wasn't for her and Drew Barrymore, the movie would have never gotten made. That's the other thing I kept with the mask. So you have this creepy element. Of course, this doesn't have the blood on it, but. Uh... That's. <laughs> you watched oh, it. Real or imaginary? Your cup, Tony. Imaginary. 
You have the, the mask there. Uh, how did it help you to shape the character to find? You have the script, you understood it, but then you have the mask and you have the, the suit of Frank. So how much did it help you to shape the character? Well, I, I think it helped shape the character in the sense that when I saw it visually, because I thought it was just going to be, a, and when you read the script, it just reads as a six foot rabbit. It doesn't say that he, it doesn't describe any of the features. So I was getting, after I got the part, I was getting fitted for the bunny suit and they showed me, a, you know, a drawing, a sketch of, they said, this is what you're going to look like. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it, you know, it changed things for me, but it only changed things in the sense that I realized that what people saw visually wasn't going to change how, what the character was. So for me, when I made sense of the characters, I realized that Frank, or at least the way I always saw Frank, was actually Donnie Darko's guardian bunny. Yeah. Helping to guide him. Yeah. To set the universe to right. Yeah. But it's presented and, like in a dark way. So we think it's like almost a demon in a way. Almost a demon, but really he's a friend. He's just a dark friend. Yeah. You know, because he comes from an element of another reality where he was shot, he was killed, he killed Gretchen drunk driving. So he's trying to set things right as well because he's responsible for the death in the other reality. Yeah, yeah. And since he knows Donnie because he's actually his sister's boyfriend, you know, I wanted to add this element of, you know, he's sort of like an older brother character almost in a way, guarding it, looking out. He just wants to make sure that Donnie is going to make it out all right in which case it's still kind of dark because for donnie to fix things he has to die yeah so he has to accept his death in the other reality so i have to guide him to not be afraid of death anymore and to accept his death meanwhile in doing so and sacrificing himself he saves not only himself and the people he loves he saves the entire universe yeah and then that takes me back to that you know reading the script which i love so much one of my favorite scenes, I love everything with Donnie and Gretchen, but one of my favorite scenes is when they're walking home and she says that, you know, Donnie Darko, what kind of name is that? You think you're some kind of superhero or something? And he looks at her and he goes, Man, what makes you think I'm not? <laughs> and he is very much so a superhero. Yeah. And so I'm like, but he is a superhero. Yeah. And Frank and I, my job as Frank is to help him realize his role. Yeah. For him, almost like the role of Luke Skywalker to step across the threshold and take the role of the hero. He's yeah. part of the hero's journey. Yeah. And I'm his Obi-Wan Kenobi in a way to helping him to guide him to this. To obey him, he saved my life. Have you ever seen a portal? Well, believe it or not, I mean, I don't, it's, it's, it's kind of leaked in the news a little bit. It's a rumor, but it's a rumor that is founded. I'll be honest, uh, Richard Kelly came up with a sequel story, an idea to expand on it that would be canon. I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm involved um, for a few reasons, but um, I, would, I would return, the moment he asked me, I would return in a heartbeat. 